Drumming is a physically demanding activity that can elevate a resting heart rate from 60 to 200 beats per minute, breathing frequency from 15 to 50 breaths per minute, and even the volume of air we breathe in and out from five to over 100 liters per minute. This can be accompanied by a sweat loss of over one liter per hour. Indeed, the physiological demands experienced by a rock drummer during a 90-minute live performance have been compared to that of a Premier League football player. An integral feature of both activities is the need to supply energy at different rates in order to achieve the desired outcome. What separates the drummer's performance from that of a footballer is the requirement to integrate and synchronise multiple limbs to produce the desired movement associated sound and accompaniment to other musicians. In this instance, the sound is influenced by rhythm, timing and volume. Therefore, it could be argued that drumming poses a unique challenge to the human brain. This applies both to the novice, picking up a set of drumsticks for the first time, and the expert drummer, developing advanced techniques. Observations of novice and expert drummers show that proficiency and technical skills improve over time with practice. But what is happening to the brain to lead to such an improvement? To investigate these questions, research was undertaken by academics at King's College London, Hartbury University and the University of Chichester. They recruited 32 volunteers aged between 16 and 19 years who had no previous experience of drumming. Volunteers were divided into an experimental group or control group. The experimental group received eight weeks drumming tuition comprised of three 30 minute sessions per week. Whereas the control group received no drumming tuition. Prior to the start of the study, each volunteer had a magnetic resonance imaging or MRI brain scan to establish baseline brain structure and function. Each volunteer also undertook a number of drumming specific tests to establish drumming ability. These tests were repeated eight weeks later following the completion of the drumming tuition. So what did the results show? Well, drumming performance improved in the experimental group by 47%. This was accompanied by an 18% reduction in error due to enhanced synchronisation between the active limbs. The size of improvement in drumming ability was somewhat of a surprise, but not as big a surprise as the accompanying changes in brain structure and function. Brain scan data showed that specific regions of the brain had adapted to the novel task of drumming and communication pathways between structures had become enhanced. Changes within the cerebellum were significant due to its role in helping to regulate motor control, movement coordination, working memory, response timing, action planning and attentional control. Communication between different brain regions became more synchronised and efficient. Indeed, you could say that the brain became more in tune, leading to enhanced drumming performance. The location of these adaptations is of particular interest to those interested in exploring the potential therapeutic benefit of drumming for those individuals experiencing brain disorders. For example, the observed changes in the mirror neurone system, or MNS, is of particular interest to those working in the area of autism, as this system is closely associated with empathy, the ability to correctly interpret, give meaning, and respond emotionally to the feelings of others. So can drumming be used as a useful intervention for those with brain disorders? This research group believes so. They are about to begin their first study exploring the health benefits of drumming amongst young people with autism. However, the researchers point out that the findings of their current research should not be limited to just autism. Rather, current thinking suggests that the most powerful stimulus for brain regeneration is a combination of physical exercise and learning to perform complex psychological tasks. Therefore, the findings of this research may also be of interest to individuals who experience other disorders, such as stroke, traumatic brain injury, and movement disorders. 
My name is Mark Richardson and I just want to say a massive thank you to the Waterloo Foundation for all your continued support.